Hey, so this will be another video uh, filled with little tips and tricks to help you get the most out of Modo. Um, again, uh, like the previous video, this is uh, this is mostly aimed at new users who are trying to figure things out. But there's hopefully some stuff in here for experienced users as well. The, you know, there's a lot to Modo, and uh, even still, we're just scratching the surface. So let's take a look. So the first thing real quick is to show you how the edit fields can take uh, both math equations and they can take measurements specified in pretty much whatever format you want, well within reason, and it'll convert it down to your desired format. So looking in my preferences, right? So I go to system preferences in my unit section. Uh, mine is set to metric because that's uh, what Unreal Engine 4 uses and Unity uses. It's, it's kind of the new standard. So metric and centimeters is how I generally work. But let's say I'm making a cube and it's gotta be some kind of specific height, right? So in the size Y field, I'm like, well, I don't know how many, or I don't know how many centimeters it is, uh, but I do know that it needs to be three feet. So I'll put three FT in there and press enter and Moto converts that to 91.44 centimeters. That's super handy for a lot of reasons, obviously. So the other thing that these edit fields support is simple math equations. Actually, maybe not simple. I'm not quite sure how far they go because I haven't really pushed them all that hard, but uh, I do know they take ba basic equations. So let's say, you know, once again, we go into our size field and they say, well, I don't know how many centimeters this is supposed to be, but it's going to be two FT, so two feet plus 17 inches plus 1,500 millimeters and press enter and Moto will do all the math to bring that back to the coordinate system or, or sorry, to the unit system that I already specified. And that's that, you can mix and match and have fun. Okay, so um, this is not gonna be a comprehensive rundown of snapping in Moto, but it's gonna be something that gives you the basic mechanics of it because there's a surprising number of people that don't uh, really uh, understand the way it works. So uh, for a real quick demo here, uh, let's say you've got this plane here. This is uh, not axial aligned, right? You can see this is kind of off on a weird angle. And I want to drag, say, this vertex, well, all, uh, both of these vertices to be uh, in line with this thing, uh, with that vertex. Well, when it's off angle like that, uh, that can be difficult. So the solution in Moto speak, is to grab those polygons and move the work plane there. Now my coordinate system, you know, lies on that polygon. We've covered this in a previous video. So now if I select this vertex and tell Moto that I want to move it, now I can uh, restrict the movement to, to the work plane. See how it's stuck to the work plane? And so it doesn't compromise that angle. Now to get it to snap to this vertex, uh, I have to turn on snapping and go into my snapping options, you know, pop over. Uh, I have a hotkey that just brings this up real quick, uh, but I'll anchor it for now. We'll just lock it up here. So uh, bringing this up and turning on vertex means that when I'm dragging, oh, and one quick note about uh, axis locking in Moto. Uh, axis locking is about as simple as it gets. Uh, if I only want to snap on one axis, then I only need to drag that handle on the widget. So if I only want to snap the X coordinate, you know, I'll grab the red axis and drag the red axis. Now you can see here, we're still not getting what we want because it's just moving back and forth and it's not snapping to this vertex down here like I asked it to. Well, the reason for that is when you're dragging this handle, I see the little cross there that comes free. Uh, the cursor kind of comes back to me. So my movement is constrained on X. And now I have this roaming cross here that if I position that on that vertex, it snaps to it. So now those vertices are aligned as per, as per the work plane and as per the snapping options that I specified. So let's do it again. If I grab this one, so say I want to drag it and I'm like, well, I'm going to drag on X. I'm going to move the crosshair down here until I get to that point and it's going to snap it over. Yeah, and now they're all aligned just the way I wanted them to be. Uh, that can be tricky to get a hold of when you're new and using Moto because it's not always apparent that you have to 
you know, hover over what you want to snap to and that kind of thing. So one thing I've heard from uh, Max users trying to make the transition to Moto is that they miss the, um, uh, the edge extrusion uh, method of modeling that they do in Max. You know, where you grab an edge and just shift drag, shift drag, shift drag. And that actually is possible in Moto, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So if I just make a single polygon, right, and I select the edge. Now the edge extend tool is what you would use in Moto. And I think by default it's bound to Z. That's where I've got it anyway. So when you do that, um, you can then drag out, uh, you can extrude off that edge. Now the way Moto works with tools, your inclination as a new user is to drop this tool, then reactivate it, drag it, drop the tool, reactivate it. Instead, just shift click. Shift click restarts the current tool. So you can shift click just like you can in Max, you know, and extrude these edges out uh, all day long. You know, and it works, you know, with uh, multiple selections and all that kind of stuff. But you can do all that shift click uh, modeling that you're used to and you shouldn't have a problem with it. So this is something pretty straightforward for experienced users, but it's something that I've used a lot more lately since I've been doing modular work and getting something to be a precise size matters. So, you know, and that's the absolute scaling dialog. So uh, having something selected, uh, go to your snaps and precision callout and go to absolute scaling. Uh, this dialog comes up uh, if you change your selection, you can hit the grab size button again to refresh the fields. But there's options here for uniformly scaling and different methods of doing it and stuff. But, but the most straightforward use is uh, this comes up. Uh, you know, I go down to this field here and I type in specifically what I want, you know, two meters square by three and a half meters high. Uh, then I hit the uh, explicit scale button and it just scales whatever I have, uh, whatever I have selected to those exact dimensions. So you can see how that might be super handy when doing modular work. So something else that's super handy is you can tell Modo to look uh, outside of its default folders to find your config files, uh, you know, your custom forms, your hotkeys, all that kind of stuff. So what I've, in, so what I've done uh, is I've told Modo to find, to look for my config stuff uh, in my Dropbox folder. And what that allows me to do, uh, well, there's two big benefits to that. Obviously, uh, it's backed up in the cloud and it's versioned. Uh, if I make a change that does something terrible to my config, I can always just, you know, pop back within that 30 day window or whatever it is Dropbox gives you and pull the config back. Uh, the second big advantage is, you know, let's say you've got a work computer and a home computer and a laptop and they're all running Modo. And, and you want to keep them synced up, obviously. You want the same hotkeys, the same forms, and all that stuff, but you don't want to duplicate the work three times. Well, using the redirect method completely eliminates that because they're all looking in the same spot. So the way you set this up is super simple. Uh, just go to your system menu and choose the open user configs folder. Uh, once that opens up, um, you're going to want to create a single file in there called redirect.cfg. And I'll take a look at what that looks like in a second. So you can see here, this has opened up my file explorer and, you know, and I'm inside of my, you know, my blah, 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 whatever folder it opens for you. And I have one file in here called redirect.cfg. So looking at the contents of that file, uh, you can see there's one line in here that really matters and it tells it the path to find my config folder on my hard drive. And following that path, um, you can see it's just like I said, it's uh, all my config stuff is just sitting in here. Uh, there's a redirect CFG in here as well, but that's just for safekeeping. So I don't, you know, lose the contents of that file through some freak accident. Um, yeah, but that's it. Uh, that'll keep uh, all of your machines synced and keep your config backed up at the same time. So the last thing I wanted to show, and this is kind of an advanced thing to be honest, but uh, once you get into customizing hotkeys in Moto, you you begin to realize that Moto allows for hotkeys uh, hotkeys within tools, uh, which is an interesting concept because what that means is you can use the same hotkey 
in different tools for different reasons or different purposes. So real quick, for example, let's say that I am making a cylinder and I've gone ahead and I've mapped my, my Q and my W keys for increase and decrease uh, for these purposes. Just uh, hang with me for a second. So my Q and my W keys will control the number of sides that appear on the cylinder. So you can watch it over here in the size field. And you know, Emoto is just saying, yeah, okay, so you're hitting Q and W, it's going up and down, and that's perfect. Uh, when I leave that tool and hit Q, um, that brings up this menu for me. And the W key obviously uh, invokes my move tool. Well, not obviously, but that's what it does in Moto. So, and for another example, let's say that I go in here and I do an extrusion on this. My Q and W keys will control uh, the segmentation of that, of that extrusion. I drop the tool you know, and they go back to their prior purposes again. Uh, that's super useful because you can get into your head. You're like, okay, so when I'm doing a tool or an operation of whatever kind, uh, if I hit Q or W, I know that I'm going to be increasing or decreasing some value somewhere. Uh, and that's all set up in the config file. And well, I consider not doing this, but I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to put a link to my config file um, that you can download and look at. Now, uh, I warn you that you probably won't be able to understand everything in it. And it's going to be referencing scripts that you don't have and that kind of thing. But you should be able to see the basic setup for how to do hotkeys on individual tools. Uh, that'll be up near the top of the file. So uh, you'll get the hang of it if you dig in a little bit. Oh, and just one more example of this. Uh, I've got it set up so that when I say use, use my duplicate, sorry, my clone tool and drag this out, you know, my Q and W key are controlling how many clones are appearing between the start and the finish. So you can think of all kinds of uses for this stuff when you get going. I've got specific hotkeys within tools for all kinds of purposes, for flipping axes and turning options on and off. Like when I go to drag something and I pull it out, um, there's an option here to slip the UVs, you know, which in Moto means to uh, to adjust the UVs to, to reflect the drag operation. But I don't have to go over here to hit that because I just hit U and that toggles that on and off for me during the tool's activation. So there's, there's tons of uses for this kind of stuff. And, and this is obviously not an in-depth tutorial, but I wanted to show it to you to make you aware um, that it exists. Uh, and like I say, I'll provide a link to my uh, my config file so you can look at it and you know maybe make and maybe make heads or tails out of it. Good luck.